Hello there, dear. What a fun, gorgeous day. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Uh, I promised I was going to talk about Star Wars, continuing on with uh, my conversation about the Mandalorian. Uh, however, I'm going to hijack that conversation with something different, um, only because my mind is always uh, changing and refocusing on stuff to do. So, uh, what I want to talk about now is about being a beginner rider and the fears that I had to conquer understanding that a lot of you have different experiences uh, on motorcycling and obviously people that have subscribed probably are more experienced than I am on riding a motorcycle so with that said have some patience because I just I am just trying to grow my channel I did discuss it on my first video but I want to go in a little bit in more in depth of my fears of riding a motorcycle uh, as a noob and I, I told you guys before, uh, the first thing that I had issues with was working the clutch system uh, with my left hand and as well as my left foot uh, and the, my right hand throttle. So all these things combined, it was just something that I could not fathom um, just by watching YouTube videos. It's just, it's not possible. So not knowing how that functions uh, on an actual bike it's not something that you can actually go into a motorcycle store where you can ask them like, hey, I'm new, I just got my license, or I don't have a license, can I try out your new bike? Um, it's, not, it's not doable. At least where I live, it's not doable. So really, my only option for, for to get experience before actually trying it out on my, my own bike was to take the MSF course. And I would highly recommend if you're in the same situation I was, uh, to take the MSF course. It will give you a lot of confidence in terms of how to manage a bike and if you do end up dropping it, which has happened frequently on my course, uh, it's not your own bike, it's, it's a bike that's meant to be abused and used. Will it teach you how to ride safely on the road? Yes, a little bit. Um, if you have experience of riding a different types of uh, two-wheel vehicles, then you will have probably zero issues. If you have been driving for a while, I mean, you're going to have to learn how to be on a two wheel, but the rules are basically the same, so it's not too much of a difference. But what I would say is you should learn how to ride a bicycle if you haven't already. I mean, there are some adults out there who don't know how to do it. So I would say for safety reason, learn how to ride a bike first. Uh, especially if you're trying to figure out what counter steering feels like. It's, it's a concept that you cannot learn from the books. When you're on a bicycle, you, you will know by pushing left, you are leaning left. Pushing right, leans right. Um, and it's not, a, it's not something a book can teach you. It's, it's the feel that you have on the road. So to do it safely without spending too much money, I would say get a, get a friend's bicycle if you don't have one. Uh, and try to try to get to up to speed of maybe 20 to 30 kilometers per hour, uh, whether going downhill or you know straight away. And counter steering is something that you will get a feel of. It feels a little different on a motorcycle, um, clearly because you have more power to it, but the concept is the same. Another fear that I had, which I didn't think about, and and it only came in once I was on the course, was starting up on a hill. Um, or doing anything on a hill. So like slow moving traffic on a hill uh, going upwards is nerve wracking. Um, I still am slightly nervous, especially when it's moving at like five kilometers per hour speed, uh, only because you're constantly engaged in the friction zone, first gear, and everyone gets impatient, especially on the road. So there, there's a lot more potential for accidents. It's a good thing that I'm always cautious about it. I, I hope I don't ever lose this feeling and become overly confident on it. But 
if your MSF course doesn't teach you how to start up on a hill, um, because I don't think it's a prerequisite, get a friend who has a motorcycle um, to show you how it's done and then practice on a safe environment because last thing you want to do is pass the pylon course or test go get your awesome new bike and then the first thing you get hit is a red light on a hill or a stop sign and now you have stalled or dropped the bike or rolled backwards and hit a car um, that is not the situation you want to be in so i highly advise practicing it ahead of time if your course doesn't cover it if your course does cover it then practice there and make sure you get a lot more instructional value from your instructor on how to how to conquer it. My advice is using the rear brake. A lot of people have different mechanisms of how to start up on a hill. I think one of the advice I had before was to plant both feet and just hold your bike up and lean forward but that just doesn't sound right to me uh, or feel right. Using your rear brake and then engaging the throttle and slowly letting the clutch out and then slowly letting go of your rear brake is the way to go for me. Another fear that I had to conquer was properly braking. So if you see a lot of YouTube videos, you'll see videos where people uh, do panic braking. And panic braking comes with your front brake um, where rather than doing a gradual squeeze, you kind of do a panic grab. And when you do a panic grab, your front wheel will either turn left or right when the momentum is trying to go forward. If you're panic braking, it will fall and you will fall with it. And so to avoid that, one of the YouTubers called Dan Dan the Fireman talks about squeezing an orange where you can squeeze fast, uh, but you still have to do a gradual pressure and, and then gradually increasing that pressure until you stop moving. And that's kind of the concept I've been using. Now, your skill sets on riding a bicycle also comes into this. Uh, if you've ever been on a road bike where you panic brake and you flip forward, uh, that's, that's kind of the same concept, but instead of flipping forward, well, I guess you could flip forward on a motorcycle if you go fast enough, uh, is that your bike will just jackknife and, and then the momentum will carry you down. So braking is extremely important and I, and I would say I'm still learning how to brake uh, efficiently, especially using the engine brakes. Engine braking, I, I find it's, it's more something that you can kind of work through by experience. It's not a, it's not a must do thing. Just learn how to use your front brake using your right hand and combining you with your right foot for the rear brake. So yeah, anyways, if if you share the same thoughts or had the very similar experience on the fears of riding a motorcycle in the beginning, then put it in comments below. I think the biking community or motorcycle community is like a family. Um, and I can't say that enough. I mean, we have our own ways for God's sakes. It's all about connecting and as well as to share experiences so we can learn from each other. And really, um, it's good that we were, if we're able to bring on more motorcycle riders into the community because it does take away traffic congestion on the roads and I think the carbon footprint is definitely lower than a car. So yeah, if you're new to riding or about to purchase your first vehicle or just curious of what it's like, those are the three fears that I had to conquer on, on my way to riding this motorcycle. Um, every person has a different level of risk acceptance or or different types of fears that you'll have to conquer. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, those are my three big fears as a new rider. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe uh, and share the, share the link to your friends and family who wants to ride a motorcycle so you can help the channel grow. All right, take care. Peace out.